I come from a good home. Um, you know, went to school, got pretty good grades, you know, went to college, and but that entire time, there was something missing in my life, and you know, my life lacked this significance, and I was always trying to chase that significance through getting good grades or through you know scoring a touchdown or I was a wrestler so it was you know through beating my opponent and it was through once I got out of school in the business world is you know let me go sell the most of this and let me go do the best at that and that was the way I was finding my significance and what I learned was just as you guys said that you've been in that place where you felt like you had no hope when you're chasing significance and chasing for your purpose and those external things it's gonna leave you in a place where you feel like you have no hope. And I got to a place in my life where I had achieved some things, I'd had some failures, I'd had some successes, but the significance just wasn't there. And I realized that I was looking for significance in myself and not realizing that God had made me significant from day one. And that it was really only through me connecting with God that I was gonna be of any significance altogether. I found my now wife, uh, we met each other, and you know, something I hadn't talked about a whole lot is I was still lost. Like, we found each other and, and you know, we were dating and, and things were getting pretty serious, but like, I still had no idea what I was gonna do professionally. Um, I was still drinking too much. I ended up going to Ohio to help a friend launch a business up there. I was up there for about six or seven months. But it's funny, when I was in Ohio, I was renting out this room inside a basement. It was like in, the, in an, an interior room inside of a basement. So it was like, <laughs> like no windows. And it was like the first time I'd ever found myself like truly, truly alone. And there were some moments in that basement where I felt like God had purposely put me there and said, hey, I needed some stuff to happen in your life so I could finally get you alone so you could finally cut out the noise and, and finally hear me. Like you could finally get to a place where we could actually talk and get to know each other. And there were some of the most transformative um, nights of my life in that basement of that guy's house that I was living with. Some mentors came into my life and started pouring confidence into me. Thought there was more in me than I saw in myself at that time. And it was during that time that I started waging war on personal change. I was exactly where I was supposed to be because of the decisions I had made in my life. And it was really in that moment that I finally took ownership and realized that everything was my fault. The interesting thing is, it wasn't just the process of me taking ownership that changed everything. It was me taking ownership, but realizing I couldn't do it alone. So once I realized that I had gotten myself into that mess, and that only I could get myself out, I realized that it was only through God that I could get myself out. And that it was only through God that I did have hope of what was to come. I waged war on becoming a better person. But it wasn't until I allowed God into that conversation, until I allowed God into that, that scenario that things really started to change. Because I wanted my life to be a picture of what happens when I get to the end of myself and then God begins to show him through me.